Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, I got a pretty, pretty interesting topic for you guys, and the topic is analyzing the young stars of the Toronto Raptors moving forward. So that's the topic I want to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also, be sure to check out the Dreamers Pro Podcast, which we have uh, linked in the description below, and also be on the lookout. Also, be on the lookout for our premium platform, Dreamers Pro Premium Platform, that we're launching in the first week of Oc. I mean, of January, excuse me. So be on the lookout for that because we're really excited about that. Anyway, let me just go ahead and get into the topic right here. So. I've been actually wanting to cover this topic for quite some time now, but um, I figured, okay, today's a good day to cover it because, um, you know, not too many crazy stories happen in the NBA, so I have enough time to really get into this and just really dissect the, the, uh, this team in, in uh, uh, um, a bit. So, let's talk about the Toronto Raptors. Now, I, you know, given the fact that they've already won their title two years ago, there's kind of, be, there's kind of been a change in the guard, right? They've kind of lost a good amount of their their veterans to be quite honest with you for example if you think of the loss of, not loss but let's just say the loss of Kawhi Leonard he no longer plays with the team he was the key veteran in helping them win the title they recently lost Serge Ibaka um this offseason he went to go play with the Clippers and they also lost Mark Gasol Mark Gasol decided to go play with the Los Angeles Lakers and these were major cornerstones of that team especially for that title run these are experienced NBA veterans and they lost some key pieces, right? So it made me begin to think, okay, what are the current pieces that they currently have in place? I've been watch I watched a little bit of the highlights from them in the preseason. But as you know, there's so many games going on in the preseason and to catch everything is going to be impossible given the fact that I only have two eyeballs. So um, I, I've been watching them in the preseason and I wanted to focus a little bit on their younger core and what I think it means for the Toronto Raptors moving into the fort, uh, in, into the future. So let's start off with Pascal Siakam, who seems to be the centerpiece of their young core, right? And I'm focusing on these younger players. So if you look at Pascal Siakam, Pascal Siakam hasn't been in the league that long, to be quite honest with you. He, you know, he came into the league in what, 2016. He's a very young guy. Um, I mean, he won his first NBA title with the team in 2019. But also in 2019, he was the most improved player of the year. So just think about just how young of a player Pascal Siakam is. His first his first season in the NBA, the guy averaged 4.2 points per game. Next season, he bumped it up to 7.3. The next season, which was the year they broke through and won the NBA title, he went from 7.3 points per game to 17 points per game. That is a that is a huge jump, right? That is a huge, he more than doubled his averages. He got you 6.9 rebounds per game, 3.9 assists, shot 37% from the three for the season, right? For the season. And he shot 55% from the field. Now, let me just explain to you. And then, of course, last season, he averaged 23 points per game, one steal per game, 3.5 assists, 7.3 rebounds. Uh, shot basically 80% from the free throw line, 36% from the free throw uh, from the three point line, and 45% from the field. Let me just explain to you just how extraordinary of a leap that is for Pascal Siakam, and that's why I say in the NBA, a lot of these players that you see them put on lists, a lot of it has to do with hype, not necessarily production. Think about him and think about Ben Simmons, right? Think about Pascal Siakam. And think about Ben Simmons. Pascal Siakam, Pascal Siakam, I think, is from Cameroon. He's an African guy. He's an African kid. You know, he didn't grow up in the States, play basketball through the you know United States basketball system, AAU, and all of that. Pascal Siakam came into the league. First season in the NBA, he was shooting 14% from the three. The next season, he was shooting 22%. By his third year in the NBA, he was already shooting over 35% from the three. If you juxtapose Pascal Siakam's production with that of a Ben Simmons, it's not even close. It's not even close. If Ben Simmons was improving at the rate Pascal Siakam was as a shooter and, and an overall player, Ben Simmons would be one of the best players in the league. Ben Simmons, I've heard, has only made like two or three three-pointers for his career. For his career. So... Pascal Siakam and these guys are just on a different level when it comes to truly, 
truly getting better. And that's why, if you had to ask me, would I rather have Pascal Siakam or Ben Simmons? It's not even a question. So Toronto Raptors, you guys have a very, very special player because if you look at his, if you look at his improvement, you can tell that this is somebody that is seriously committed to getting better. And for him to have this type of improvement is nothing to sneeze at. Like this guy is like talking. You're talking about having a multiple perennial all-star uh, career for this guy pascal siakam moving forward so they have pascal siakam another younger player who's pretty young and i just recently heard about him his name is chris Boucher, right i hope Boucher. I hope, I, hope, I hope i'm i hope i'm pronouncing his name uh properly now he was former he's free he was former funny enough on the golden state warriors when they won their title but that season he didn't play uh he played one game then he was on the Toronto Raptors in 2018, 2019. He played 28 games that season, averaged 3.3 points per game. Uh, he only played, what, six minutes per game on average. He shot 87% for the free throw line. But last season is when he started to get some minutes. His minutes went from 5.8 points per game to 13.2 points per game. So his minutes started going up. And obviously, with your minutes that they go up, your, pro your production usually follows suit. He went from averaging 3.5 points per game to now averaging 6.6 .6 points per game, a block a game. So that's a really good... Um, that's a really good indicator there. He, he got you 4.5 rebounds, which is pretty good in just 13 minutes per game. He shot 78% from the free throw line and 47% uh, from the field. So for me, that's pretty impressive. I look at his height. He's a legitimate 6'9 player. So I'm assuming he plays either the power forward or the small uh, small forward, a small forward um, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, um, uh, position. So he seems like a young, talented player versatile guy that they have coming off uh you know that they have on their roster as well another notable player that they have is matt thomas he seems to be a first year player um uh, straight out of college i think he, i think he i um if i look at his college he played for iowa state i haven't seen much footage on him as i said earlier i can't you can't you can't cover everything in the nba like it's just too many players uh to, uh, to cover but looking at him now he's averaging 4.9 points per game 1.5 rebounds again this is a rookie right this is a rookie so we're not going to make too much of it but for his rookie season uh, i mean he started his rookie season 2019 2020 so actually he's a sophomore he averaged five points per game he's getting you 1.5 rebounds 75 percent from the free throw line which is pretty good shooting 47 percent from the three which is actually very impressive for a rookie who played 41 minutes uh 41 games i'm assuming he used to play with the here um yeah, game started. He played. He, he played 40, 40, uh, 41 games. So the guy did his thing, man, and he seems like another young piece. I'm. I, I haven't seen much footage on this guy, so is yet to see. And of course, another up and coming star for the Toronto Raptors, of course, is OG Ananobi. All of us remember OG Ananobi from last season when he hit that shot to really um, um, keep them alive in that series against the Boston Celtics. If I look at OG Ananobi's production here. Averaging 10 points per game, 5.3 rebounds, 1.6 assists. If I look at his regular season numbers last season, uh, you know, he shot 50% from the field, which is pretty impressive. He didn't attempt much, th many threes. He attempted 3.3 uh, three-pointers three per game, making 1.3. Shot 39% from the three. That's a, that's a good that's a good percentage. 70% from the free throw line. That's also a very good percentage. Got you 5.3 rebounds, as I said, 1.6 assists, and 1.4 steals. So he seems like a very young, promising player that's really going to help this team mature going forward, uh, go, going into going, going into the future. Now, here's why I feel optimistic about the Toronto Raptors' chances going into the future. First of all, let's look at their uh, their team president, Masai Ujiri. He's building out. First of all, he has tremendous experience. One of the most respected uh, presidents of basketball operation in the NBA. Um, he's building a very young, versatile core right a very young versatile core and obviously you have fred van vliet who i cannot say enough of i mean fred van vliet just usually had the highest i think highest uh contract for none for non drafted nba play if i'm mistaken i think he got like an 85 million dollar contract we all know how big fred van vliet was in the playoffs for them when they made their title run to the nba title champion you need a player like that if you want to kind of assimilate him to another player think of like kind of a Derek fisher type of player not really flashy but very effective can hit very big timely shots so i can you, you can kind of um compare these two players so they have him of course who i did not forget and they have a nice score and fred van vliet has championship experience pascal siakam has championship experience so they have a nice team there and as i said with Masai, Masai Ujiri at the helm 
I think he understands how to build teams really well. He likes to draft a lot of African players, which is good because it, it, it gives some diversity uh, uh, on the team. If you think of OG Ananobi, uh, Pascal Siakam, of course, Serge Ibaka, uh, you know, Chris Bauscher, of course. This is good for them, right? You need some diversity in the NBA, which is also, which is also very good. We cannot forget about their coach, Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse is one of the best coaches in the NBA, coach of the year, championship coach, understands how to work with players very well. You don't really hear too much, too much drama from these guys. He just knows how to really handle players, and they have a very fantastic coach, and he's a solid team builder. So I think that's something else that they have working for them in the future. But I still do think moving forward that they need another star to go alongside Pascal Siakam. I don't think he can just... Uh, do it all on his own. And in today's NBA, you need another star. You need another star. So either an OG and an OB develops into a star or they get another star. You need help in this league, right? It's not a one all-star kind of league anymore. You need at least two stars to be uh, uh, to be competitive and to really contend in, in, in this NBA. So I think that's something also to pay attention to. But looking at the Toronto Raptors, analyzing their young core, I think they're in a good position to compete in the future now will they be competitive this year absolutely because they usually are but will they win a title i'm not sure because the, the eastern conference is very strong but they do have a, a a promising young core moving forward and that's really what i wanted to talk about so excuse me my question is do you think this team will be able to be to, to really be a title contender for the next few years do you think masai ojiri is going to continue to build out a very solid roster or do you think that hey listen it's just not going to be in their cards moving forward. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoy the video, please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also, be sure uh, to check out whatever video we have linked at the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some other videos on our channel. I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy that. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Peace.